Do you like easy? In this video, I'm just going to give you my ultimate calendar table. All you have to do is copy paste to use it within your own Power BI models. That's easy. We've already talked about why it is important to use a calendar table. In this video, I'm going to give you my ultimate calendar table and show you how to use it. And the ultimate calendar table is chock full of goodies and I know you're going to love it. It has all the usual calendar fields you would need and it's easy to customize if you need to. So here are your steps. There are many ways to create a calendar table using Excel, SQL, Azure or DAX. But my favorite method to create is completely inside the Power BI Query Editor. And this is what you need to do to use the one I have created just for you. You're going to download the ultimate calendar PBIX file, link is in the details, and then copy paste it in your model. That's it. Ah, uh, well, okay, there are two more steps. You would need to change some settings and customize it if you need, but it's going to be super easy. Let me walk you through the whole thing. So ladies and gents, in the left corner, we have the ultimate calendar table. And in the right corner, we have, well, some other Power BI model where you would like to use the calendar table. And what you're going to do is open both of them. And on the left, I'm going to open up the query editor. There we go. I'm going to move to the left. And over here, I'm going to open the query editor as well. And this is the ultimate calendar table. I'm going to copy it from here, right click copy, and I'm going to right click and paste it here. And that's it. You can close this. You don't need this anymore. And all you have to do is close and apply. And lo and behold, your model now has a calendar table. So earlier, if you had, now of course, this is a very simple model, product inventory, you have the new table ready to go. But before we can use it, we have to follow certain steps. Let's go through that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create any relationships that are needed. So now if you go back to our model, we have the calendar table. So any table which has a date field, which you would like to be connected to this lookup table, you're going to just drag and drop and connect that relationship. That's done. The next step, you need to go back to the query editor and make sure that your start date and end date are set correctly. So we're going to go back to our model click edit queries. And if you look in the calendar query uh, over on this side, you would see this section and it says set parameters above. And really the ones we care about right now are the start and end date. Uh, so if you click on start date right now, it's set to January 1, 2014. End date is December 31, 2017. You can change it to whatever you want. And later, we're also going to see how you can make this dynamic so you do not have to set it manually. So again, first two steps, really easy. Now just change it to 2018 or whichever date you prefer. So start and end date, change, uh, change that to uh, what's needed. All right, so our start date and end date is right and our table is set and we are ready to use. So we have product inventory, we're tracking units in and units out. And earlier, we could only analyze it using the product attributes, right? So we're analyzing Let's go back here real quick. Product inventory and earlier without the calendar table, we could only analyze it using the product uh, table. And now we have the calendar table with its full capabilities. So we're going to uh, do something here. Let's try product inventory, uh, units in, units out. Let's change it to a line graph. And I'm going to put in year here as a slicer. Oops, actually, let's make the list. Perfect. And here, I'm going to use the month num. And let's see how that shows. Uh, just a few other tweaks. X-axis, categorical. I'm going to fix the sorting. All right, there we go. So we have month 1 through 12, and I can check a specific year if I wanted to. Now that's great and working, but you noticed that I, I, I stayed away from a lot of conventional fields like the month name. And there's a reason for that because there are some other settings which you would need to change. So we have already done create relationships and we've already done uh, looked at the start and end date, 
But there are two other settings you need to look at, which is the sort by column and don't summarize. Let's look at that. So we're going to go back to uh, our table and I'm going to go to the data view in the calendar table. And you notice the month field and by default, it's going to sort alphabetically. We don't want that. So I'm just going to change that to sort by month num. And same for this. And I'm going to go across and fix the sort by column settings for some of these other labels. Or if you add year, it kind of sums it up. It's adding up the years, which is just silly. So for that, we're going to go back to the data view and uh, select columns like the year and change the summarization setting to don't summarize. So I'm just going to check that right there. And I'm going to show you how that changes the behavior. So now if I select the year, oh well, try table, it just lists that out and doesn't try to add them up. So I'm going to go back and fix the summarization settings. So for a few other numeric columns, perfect. So I've changed that for pretty much all the numeric columns that I saw, because really there's nothing here which needs to be added up. And now that we have the sort by column all correct, we can have a little more fun here. And instead of month num, we can put the real month name, which is a little more friendly for um, all of us. So that's it. We copy pasted our calendar table, modified a few settings, and uh, we uh, are able to leverage the full. So that's it. We just copy pasted the calendar table and we're able to leverage the full strength of the calendar table just by a copy paste and changing a few settings. Now, so let's go back. Uh, now, the truth is that this may be a great starting point. The calendar table that I have provided is quite full fledged. As you would see, there are lots of columns here, but I know that sooner or later you are going to customize it. And here's the reason why. The reality is that every organization I've been to has their own unique requirements for the calendar table. Everybody may start off with a basic set, but then they always uh, add something on the other. I remember walking into a client once, gave them this calendar table and they said, Oh, Avi, can we throw in academic semesters there? And I'm like, what? You, you don't, you're not a university. And they said, no, but some of her, uh, audience or customers clients are educational. And so we just want to track how our sales or other metrics do according to the academic semesters, right? So, and again, so you're going to have your own specific requirements. So for that, uh, you are going to need to customize it to really make it your own. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through step by step on how I created the calendar table. Now it's going to be a good learning experience experience and it would help you make the tweaks you need to customize the uh, calendar table just for yourself. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.